Hey guys, welcome to the Lefty Classroom. So I just finished my first year of teaching and I am super excited to share with you guys some of the things that I've been reflecting on that worked for me this year. Most of these things that I'm sharing are about classroom management, procedures, things like that. And I know that they'll be really, really helpful. I taught seventh grade math, so it was middle school. And I know that while I was in pre-service and getting my degree, I would have loved to have seen someone share something like this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the first thing. The first thing that I think I did really well was at the very beginning of the year, first day, day one, I did teach some curriculum, but most of that time, the 50 minutes, was spent going over rules and procedures. Now, I only had a select few of rules, maybe like four rules, and they're just general, like be respectful, things like that, like come to class prepared. But the real kicker that I think really helped me was the procedures. The procedures I decided to teach them on the first day, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and teach them the ones that they'll use pretty much every single day. So those are the ones that I went with. For example, whenever they walk into my classroom, there's a little nightstand. If there's a stack of papers on there, that would be their worksheet for the day. So they would come in and they would grab that worksheet and then they would go sit down. So on the first day of school, at some point during the class period, I had everyone get up and walk out of the classroom. And then as they entered in, I just had them pick up a worksheet. So I wasn't wasting any time passing out papers, but they were also practicing the procedure of when you see a paper here, you pick it up, that's yours for the day. One thing that I would really, really recommend is this book right here. It's called The First Days of School. It's by Harry and Rosemary Wong. You can probably pick this up at a local library or you can order it on Amazon. I'll leave the link below because this, this was just so awesome for me. The second thing that I'm really happy I did this year was I taught them that I dismissed them, not the bell. Now you will get students who ask, then what's the bell for? And to that I say, that is to let me know that you need to go, not to let you know that you are going. Now this is very important because we try to teach from bell to bell. We have very limited time with these kids and every minute can count and can help. So whenever it's getting close to that bell time, especially in middle school, they're already aware that it's almost time and so they try to start packing up. But if they know I'm not going to get dismissed at the bell anyways until my teacher stops talking, then they're less likely to kind of tune out and get distracted on what they're going to do next. Although I will say most of the time I did give them like 30 seconds to pack up at the end of class. But there were a few times throughout the year where we just I just had to keep talking that we had to keep going. A little bit after the bell rang. The third thing that I think I did really well was my attention getter and I actually did have to adjust it and really completely change it because while I was student teaching I saw a wonderful example and it worked for my cooperating teacher. What she did was she would say class class and the class would respond yes yes and so I saw it work for her and I thought wow that's amazing I wrote it down I said I'm doing this. And then when I actually did it in my own classroom, as I was saying class, class, the students would respond yes, yes, but they'd still be digging in their backpacks or they'd still be writing something down. And when I wanted their attention, I wanted it full on, like looking at me, stopping anything else that they're doing. So I did explicitly teach them the class, class, yes, yes at the beginning, but then I ended up switching it to a different one. So what it ended up being was I would go to around the front of the room, that's normally where I gave my announcements, and I would do a hand motion where I just raised my hand up, and so it was a visual cue, uh, then I would speak. I would say, can I have your attention please? And then I would tell them what I wanted them to do. Just pause whatever it is you're doing and look up here. It seems very formal at first, but I'm telling you, once you do it enough times, it's just like normal. It's just like, hey, you guys, look up here. That's what it seems like, even though you're still saying the formal words. Now, the fourth thing that I think I did really well this year isn't a classroom management thing, but it's the fact that I didn't take on any extracurricular things as a first year teacher. So I heard that a lot while I was in school and while I was listening to other teachers give me advice. They're like, you can say no and you know, you don't have to do it all and your first year is about survival 
And so I really tried to take their advice to heart and not overwhelm myself because your first year is very overwhelming in and of itself. So I was really proud of myself for not doing extracurricular things. And I know that sounds really weird because usually you're proud of yourself for doing all the extracurricular things on top of it, but because I'm naturally inclined to do things like that, it was a big deal for me not to. So I didn't co-sponsor any clubs, I didn't start any clubs, although I have so many ideas of what I would want to start, and I didn't join any boards or committees or anything like that with the school. I just said no, and that was good for me. Now that kind of leads into the fifth thing that I think I did really well this year, which was I supported my students outside of the classroom. And by that, I mean I went to their extracurricular things. When they had home games, they had plays at the school, things like that, I would definitely go and support them. And even to the point if they had like a UIL event and then we got back their results, well in class I would say, hey, I saw you got third place in number sense, great job. And so I was very supportive of my students and aware of the things that they accomplished outside of my classroom. And not only was I aware of that, but I told them that. I said, good job, and things like that. So they saw me outside the classroom, and they knew that I cared. So that's a huge deal, a huge win for me. So I'm really excited that I did that this year. The sixth thing that I think I did really well this year was I had a tutorials binder. My tutorials binder had them put their name, student ID, the date, and the time that they came, because I had morning and afternoon. So I wanted to know, were they here in the morning, afternoon, both, whatever the case. The only thing that I would add for next year is the reason. Are they here for help with the homework from last night? Were they absent and they need to make something up? Are they doing test corrections? Whatever the case, I just really wish that I had had that this year, so that's something that I will be adding. But I'm really glad that I had the binder in general because I had a lot of parents that would email me you know, they could email even a week later and ask, hey, I dropped so and so off in the morning, were they there at your tutorials? And so, I mean, I don't remember. I would go back to the binder and say, oh yeah, they were here and they came at this time. So that kind of documentation, I'm really glad that I had and I would highly recommend documenting everything. You may have already heard to document any kind of parent contact, but a tutorials binder is also a really good idea to have that and document. The last thing that I'll share, because I think this video is getting a little long, is whenever I started the students on independent work, there's kind of a transition time right there. So we would go over a problem together and I would tell the class, okay, you do problems three, five, and seven on your own. And let's say I needed to go take attendance real quick on my computer or answer an urgent email. Well, in that transition time, especially in middle school, the kids can kind of transition off task. So one thing I think I did really well with that transition time is instead of just immediately going to the computer to do what I needed to do, I instead took about 30 seconds to just quickly walk around the classroom. I would highly recommend doing that whenever you give the students some independent work or during a transition time, make sure that you show your presence around the room because that'll really encourage them to stay on task. So that's it for this video. I do plan to come out with another video of things that I tried that did not work because I think that's as equally important to talk about as well. So stay tuned for that. Hit the like button if you liked it or learned something new or enjoyed it and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!